Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur for week 39, another seven curious interesting things I saw last week. So as ever, let's crack on. Uh, first one is robot arms and this one has funky fingers that go backward and forwards, but this is not the only thing it can do. It can detach its own hand. The hand can then figure out how to get to an object, which is clearly out of reach for the robot arm, can then pick up the object, can figure out how it needs to walk with the object, to get back into reach of the robot arm, and then the robot arm will then reattach itself. I have sped this up a little bit uh, just to get it into this video, um, but it is pretty funky anyway. So uh, I'd love to see this hand with a, maybe a battery in it and wirelessly operated so that the robot can kind of shoot out its arms, the little arms or the hands can scurry off, go and do their thing, whatever they're gonna do, have a fight with a robot dog or something, and then come back and reattach itself. So uh, that's pretty cool. So uh, like that one, stuff of nightmares, but also, Pretty cool. Uh, this is Metro Charge, uh, and this is in Barcelona. This photo is not from Barcelona, by the way, but it is a train. Um, and it's all about trains using regenerative energy to power the station and also the cars outside, the electric vehicles in the car park. Um, so as the, the train's coming into the station, uh, all of the heat and all of the motion is then uh, essentially wasted at the moment. They're now capturing that. Uh, eventually that will go into batteries and also it's augmented with solar at the moment, but that then powers the station and the cars outside, as I've said. So 30% goes into the train. That's going to be a little bit more, apparently, at the end of the year. And they're putting more of these in. Uh, at the end of the year, apparently 360 cars will be able to be charged at any one time using the energy from the actual the metro. So that's pretty cool. But then you realize just how much energy is wasted or at least lost um, with these things hammering around, but just not using it. So that's a really good way of using it, charging up the cars for the commuters uh, when the train comes in like that. Well done, Barcelona. Uh, this is John Finger and a really interesting, I guess, pipeline for using the graphics using AI. So um, last week, I think it was, uh, Runway ML showed their new video to video. So you put a video in, you tell it what you wanted, and it gave you another video out. So what he's doing here is he's taking a video of him, obviously, you know, in his garden with a mug. He's then asking Runway ML to create a really harsh lit, like nighttime scene where the mug is actually a light. He's then using that, which is pretty much a black and white high contrast layer, to then take it back into his video and then use that to light up his own face in here. So it's it, what's really interesting is obviously the runway ML is sort of spatially aware, knows to light, light underneath the cap and everything, but you can now use that as a layer within your own video to add just those subtle effects to your own video. So really interesting, didn't really think of using it like that, but that's really interesting. If you are a videographer, maybe try that out. Um, Meta had a really interesting update on their Orion project. It's been going on for a while. It was going to be available to everybody, but it turns out it was so expensive that they couldn't do it. And then this is the latest version that is still so expensive they couldn't do it. So you're not going to be able to buy this thing, but they are giving it to, uh, or at least allowing journalists to have a go. Uh, this is Alex Heath from The Verge uh, doing a really good review of it. So I do implore you to go and have a look at that video. However, what is it? It's a set of AR specs and uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. It comes with a wristband as well. So that's to do the interaction. Uh, so you can do the clicky thing and the gestures and whatnot. Uh, and it can understand voice and speech. And, and But the cool thing is they look like glasses. Um, I've seen art directors wear glasses thicker than these and they can kind of style it out. So I'm sure we can. It's packed full of sensors, uh, loads of cameras, uh, even the sort of inward facing camera so that when you're doing a video call, it can regenerate your face. So we've seen this in the sort of like the Vision Pro, but the Vision Pro from Apple looks like a headset. Uh, these look like glasses. Now apparently it's not, obviously it's not perfect at the moment. There's a few things they need to fix with it, but um, you're not gonna get any hands on it anyway. So who cares? But if you do, uh, I'm very jealous, but there you go. Uh, it's a genuine sneak peek of the future when everybody's wearing these things. If you can't remember people's names, this is perfect for you. I'd like one of these. Um, shaders, if you didn't know what shaders were, they are a way of essentially rendering things without actually changing the geometry of the model. So uh, they've been used for years and years and years and they're quite interesting. But uh, this is uh, Mitenen, I think that's how you say that, um, who has got this whole kind of shader thing absolutely nailed. Creates like these kind of swamp things as you're seeing on the right hand side. But also this is his latest welding shader. So it's just a model of intersecting shapes, but it can do all the welding stuff and it can even do the little heat distortions and all that sort of good stuff as well. And then even if it's painted, it can do it all underneath the paint. So if you work in an industrial sort of 
sense and you've got CAD drawings and you need to make them look far more realistic then uh, and also you might even find that something like once you put welds on stuff some tolerances change within your model then this is really interesting kind of like that so yeah if you didn't know about shaders uh, shaders are cool and that's a new cool one um, new way of storing data. So this is um, also from Barcelona. So we've got two Barcelona shout outs this week. Um, this is storing data in fluorescent pixels. It's kind of kind of hard to explain, but also kind of funky as well. Imagine little capsules full of what is essentially paraffin um, and won't explain kind of how it works. But uh, if you then uh, have a certain mixture of paraffin in each one of those things, then it can then uh, change its color at different temperatures. So within each pixel, you can then set it not only its data by saying whether it's going to be an on or off pixel, um, but also whether that pixel appears at a certain temperature. So why would you want this? Well, A, it's a novel way of storing data, but also if that if the data is has another dimension, then it can then be used for more sort of secure uh, and privacy, I guess. If you also have to get not only the data right, but you also have to get the temperature right, and it only reveals its data at the right temperature. So I have no idea what you'd use this for, but you know, they're saying about encryption and cybersecurity, things like that. But you know, if you're thinking, um, how can you store data and um, you know, DNA data and obviously data in electronics, well, now you can store them in fluorescent paraffin filled pixels. There you go. And finally, we have squishy circuits. Um, really interesting report, scientific paper that essentially Play-Doh, or you can make it yourself and it's just as good, but you know, shop-bought Play-Doh is just as good as those little sensors, those little um, ECG pads that you put on your skin when you're having your heart rate done. Um, they not only are as good, but you can do kind of more novel things with them. So obviously here's a mock-up here of dots of blue tack on somebody's skin, but it does EEG, obviously the, you know, it can do the brain, it can do the ECG, which will be the heart, um, it can do the EOG, which is obviously going to be your face, uh, or well not obviously, and it can do your EMG, which is your muscles as well. So um, yeah, so you can put these dots wherever you want to dot, and you can also put them in slightly more interesting places because they can mold to the skin uh, and they're also a hundred times cheaper so it really brings this into a sort of an accessible way for maybe sort of uh, different uh, countries who can't afford uh, to throw away possibly a dollar per pad these all of a sudden become one cent so really like that squishy circuits is also a good way to end it's good it's fun to say there you go uh, hopefully it was interesting hopefully it was useful and i will see you next week